This question presents us with an RC circuit. We know it's an RC circuit because it contains a resistor and a capacitor. And then we know that at time zero, this switch right here is going to be closed and that's going to form a complete circuit through which charges can flow. And because we're closing the switch at time zero, what we're doing is we're actually charging up this capacitor. And we've learned in this chapter that when we're charging a capacitor, we have a couple of expressions that will be useful to us here. So if we look at the first expression, we can see that the current that's flowing through the resistor is equal to this expression right here under the condition that we're charging a capacitor. And then similarly, we can see that the potential across the capacitor is equal to this expression here, again, under the condition of charging. Now, this question asks us about a specific time when the potential across the capacitor is equal to the potential across the resistor. So in other words, the potential across the capacitor is equal to the potential across the resistor. Now, the potential across a resistor obeys Ohm's law, which you probably learned about in a previous chapter. So Ohm's law tells us that the potential across the resistor is equal to the current flowing through that resistor multiplied by the resistance value. So what we're going to do is replace this V sub R with that expression, with I multiplied by R. Now we're gonna make a couple of other substitutions here because we know that the potential across the capacitor is equal to this expression right here. So we're going to fill that in. We have the EMF of the battery multiplied by one minus this wacky term E to the negative T divided by RC. And then this current right here, the current flowing through the resistor is equal to this expression. So we'll make another substitution in which we have the EMF of the battery divided by the resistance multiplied by that same wacky term E to the negative T over RC. And then that is still multiplied by the resistance here. So here is our setup and our goal is to find the time. So we have to solve this for T. Now, if we look carefully here, we can do some simplifying. The resistance in the denominator here and the resistance in the numerator there would cancel out because of the multiplication. So those will cancel. In addition, we have the term of the EMF appearing on the left and on the right sides, both in the numerator. So basically, if you were to divide both sides of the equation by that EMF, then those EMFs would cancel out as well. So this begins to simplify greatly. We now have one minus E to the negative T over RC on the left side, and this is set equal to E to the negative T over RC on the right side. Now, in the spirit of solving for time, what we'll do next is add that term, that exponential term to both sides of the equation. They will indeed cancel out on the left side, this leaving, leaving us with just one. On the right hand side, you're gonna have two times those, uh, or that term, e to the negative t over rc. Next, you can divide both sides by two, so you now have one half is equal to e to the negative t over rc. We're getting there, but we gotta cancel out that exponential, and the best way to cancel out that exponential base is to take the natural log of both sides. When you do that, the natural log and the exponential are inverse functions, so they cancel, and that leaves you with just negative t over rc. And then we have the natural log of one half. We'll multiply both sides of the equation by rc so that it cancels out on the right-hand side. So now we have rc ln of one half equals negative t. Now we could just divide both sides by negative one. So that would make this side negative and the other side positive. So there is your expression for the time. We simply have to plug in the resistance and the capacitance, which should have been given in the question. Indeed they were. So we have 15 microfarads, 20 ohms. So the 15 microfarads and 20 ohms, so the resistance is 20 ohms. 15 microfarads should be converted into farads. So you could do 15 times 10 to the minus six. That will give you farads times the ln of one half. Let's punch this into our calculators. And when we do that, we get a time equal to about 2.08 times 10 to the minus four seconds. And if there's any, for any reason, you need to convert that into milliseconds, we can show a quick conversion there. So 
we'll take our time in seconds, and then we all know perhaps that 1,000 milliseconds are present within one second. So basically you're multiplying by 1,000, and when you do that, you get about 0 0.208 milliseconds. So if you need your answer expressed in milliseconds, it would be that. If just in seconds, it would be that. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I would greatly appreciate it. But of course, if not, I appreciate you taking the time to watch regardless. So thanks again.